Hello friends, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to Golf with Shan. In today's video, we're going to be talking about ship sticks. As some of you know, I recently took a golf trip to South Carolina. I made quite a few videos. This one specifically you should check out because that's where I go over all the golf courses, the rental unit, everything you need to know basically. So if you are curious about taking a golf trip to South Carolina, check out that video. For my golf trip, to Kiowa Island, South Carolina, I used ship sticks to ship my golf clubs from Toronto to Charleston, South Carolina, and it cost me over 500 Canadian dollars to do this. We'll go into a lot more detail in a second. Why did I choose to use ship sticks, you may ask? First off, because I was curious about it. People have told me about ship sticks and I was like, I wanna try it out. And two, since I was curious about it, I thought I'm gonna make a video about my experience and share it with all of you in case you are curious as well. And number three, and most importantly, because I had a short international layover in Chicago. I'm coming from Canada, so technically it is international. And if you know anything about American airports with short layovers, internationally specifically, odds are my checked luggage may not get on the second plane. It is a lot more safe for me to ship my golf clubs and know that it will be waiting for me at the destination than to risk having it go through a short lay layover in Chicago. So that is, those are the three reasons why I use chip sticks, even though I saw the price and I could have decided to not check out. <laughs> this video is absolutely not sponsored. I have good things and I have not so good things to say about chip sticks because it's based on my honest opinion. I paid out of pocket and they don't know I'm making this video. So please enjoy. Hit that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> Here are the topics for today's video. As always, timestamps will be in the description section if you want to skip forward to any part of the video. First things first, you are going to place your order for Shipsticks. You're going to head over to Shipsticks.com. I will have the link in the description section as well. From there, you'll see the homepage and on the homepage, they'll have right up front, you can get a quote for how much it'll cost for you to ship your clubs. That quote is gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be the price, the base price of shipping your clubs. And then there will be a few charges on top of that. The price that you will end up paying is gonna be higher than the quote, but the quote is a good kind of baseline for you. From Canada to the US or within the US is going to be a lot cheaper and it might actually come out to be worth it for you. And if you are ready to place your order, you can go ahead and place your order. The first thing you're going to do, first thing that I did, is to schedule your shipment and you'll land on the addresses page. So here is where you're going to put in your origin address, so where you are right now, and then you're going to put in the destination address where you want it to go. Any address that is legitimate, they can do. So you can ship it to a hotel, you can ship it to a golf resort, you can ship it to someone's house, you can ship it to your own house somewhere else. Most places you'll be able to ship it. It's just gonna be a lot more expensive if it's far away and international. Step two, you're gonna get to a section called tell me about yourself. And this is where you'll put in your name, email, and phone number. And then under that, here is your first additional charge. This is gonna be your golf bag insurance. On their homepage, they say $1,000 complimentary, but actually it's $500 complimentary. And then if you want more insurance coverage, then you can pay for it. You can go for the lower options if you'd like. It depends on how much your clubs are worth. That's up to you. In terms of bag size, I did standard. I believe most people will probably have standard golf bags. I don't really know what the extra large ones look like. If you have a standard like carry bag and 14 golf clubs, you probably have a standard golf bag. I picked standard bag and I have a soft travel bag. Moving on to step number three, this is where you will put in your dates for delivery. Pick round trip or one way. For me, it was a round trip. I was going from Toronto to US and back. So I picked two pickup dates, the pickup date from my place and then the pickup date on the way back from the US. And they will give you a deliver by date based on the date that you picked. One thing to note is plan at least one week ahead. The deliver by date is going to be about five business days in the future. Your clubs will likely arrive before the deliver by date 
and I think that's just because they don't want to promise a day and then it doesn't get there by that date. On the website, they technically say like if you order on a Monday, it'll say like deliver by next Monday, but it'll probably get there on Thursday or Friday of the same week. It's usually like three business days, at least from my experience. And here is your second add-on fee. If you choose to pick up from your location, there's an additional charge. Step number four is going to be your payment with the discount code. I actually just go on Google for most things. I'll go on Google and I'll just look up discount codes and I'll try a few and if they don't work, then whatever. And sometimes they do work. So in this case, I tried one that was TT Golf and I was able to get $30 off. So that's great. <laughs> Basically, I got the insurance covered. That's how I'm thinking about it. Feel free to go online and see if there are any active discount codes and just try them. You have nothing to lose. And then you're gonna put in your card information. I'm obviously not gonna show you that. And that is where you will confirm your payment. So now we get to my actual order summary page. We're not gatekeeping here. I'm telling you exactly what I paid. Outbounds. The quote that I got, $139.99, $140. Insurance, I chose the $22.99 option. Clearance fee, $10. Fuel surcharge, $25. Pickup, $5. Discount, $13.99. And then we got to a total of $189 US dollars for one way. And then on the way back, it was a little bit more. It might just be the day, like I think the pricing changes a little bit depending on time of the year, time of the month, day of the week, I don't know. Um, anyways, on the way back, it was 155 base fee plus same insurance. So insurance is for each way. It's not for your whole order. Insurance again, clearance fee again, $10, fuel surcharge, $25. These charges are going to be on, I believe, every single order. So just, just know that this is what you'll have to add on to the quoted price. Pickup fee, $5. Discount. 1549 and then a subtotal of $202 on the way back and that comes to a total of $391.42 USD which converted to Canadian dollars is over 500 Canadian dollars. So now that I've placed my order or I've already placed it I'm making this video but after I've placed my order the next thing to do is to pack your golf bag and I actually in my delusion filmed myself packing my golf bag so please enjoy that clip and you will see me again for my actual thoughts on chipsticks. Hello let's get packing. I have ordered chipsticks to pick up my golf clubs tomorrow morning. Actually it's sometime during the day but I have to have the package ready by 9 a.m. tomorrow so we got to pack my golf clubs today. First thing we're gonna pack the golf clubs and then second thing we're gonna put it in the travel case and attach the shipping label. I am a little out of breath because I was just running around trying to find a shipping label holder. If you have a hard shell case or you're shipping in a box, which I don't think they recommend, but if you have a hard shell case or if you have a soft shell travel case but there is a part where it's completely plastic, then you can just tape your shipping label to the plastic part of your case. For me though, my soft shell travel case is completely covered in canvas, so no part of the surface here is plastic, which means I can't actually tape the shipping label to the travel case. I have to instead get one of those luggage tags that are bigger and clear, and then you can zip tie it to one of the handles, and that way you don't have to tape it to any of the surfaces, but that being said, I couldn't find one. They have them online, so you can order it if you plan ahead. I didn't really plan ahead. I went to the shipping stores and all they had were these. So this is from FedEx and this one's from Canada Post. But they have these things where you slide the shipping label inside and then this is what you would tape to the side of your travel case. But like I said, I have no surface to tape it. So instead, I went to Dollarama in hopes of finding what I needed and actually Dollarama is amazing they have these bubble wrap things and they have zip tags so that's gonna be great i got one of these children's clear pencil cases so this is what i'm gonna put the shipping tag in there is one side that says smile with all these little fuzzy balls but the other side is completely transparent so if i just put the shipping label in like this this side up this is just the instructions don't worry this side up then Hopefully that'll work and I'll attach this 
to one of the t the handles. Um, they'll get a laugh out of this, but this is the closest thing I could find to what I'm looking for. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is take everything out of all of the pockets. I don't know about you, but over time you kind of have just random receipts, wrappers, random stuff in all these pockets. So it's good to just start fresh, take everything out, throw out whatever you don't need, and only pack the things that I need. Alright, next up, we're going to remove the club heads. I'm going to tape where it is, just so that when I screw it back on, I know exactly where to <laughs> put it. And then I'm also going to put D on the shaft part of it, because I have the same shaft for... Actually, no, I don't. But for my 3 wood and 5 wood, I have the same shaft. So I just like to label the shaft so that when I attach the club heads back on, I know which one it's for. We're going to put this inside the head cover and then this is gonna go in this big pocket this club head is a little bit dirty the grooves are fine I just sometimes forget the top that is all of my woods packed up in here for irons I actually have iron covers I don't use them on the golf course because it's just too much work to take on and off but for traveling I do put iron covers on all of my irons here we are, a Ziploc bag full of them. My golf bag, it looks so much shorter without the heads on the woods on them. I am going to bring this bag and I'm just going to put it in with the head covers just so that when I get to the destination and I take all the iron covers off, I have a place to kind of store them together. And we gotta bring this thing to reattach the club heads. Next up, we need some golf balls. I'm hoping to not lose too many golf balls. Here's to hoping. And yes, I've been playing the Shirks on Q-Stars. I've mentioned in a few videos now, I really like them. They're affordable and they feel great. And that's really all I ask for in a golf ball. Here we go, we got some tees. This is the one I've been using. It's like a really old foot joy, but as you can see, it's it's starting to, you know, ball repair tool, ball marker, even though the glove has a ball marker attached to it, so I usually just use that. And one more thing I always have in my bag is a soft toothbrush. This is actually just the free hotel ones from Asia. It's really soft bristles and it's actually great for cleaning the grooves on my clubs. I think we are all set. That's all I need for golf equipment. For golf shoes, I am bringing this pair. They're just the most weather friendly. In case it rains, let's please hope it doesn't rain. But in the forecast, it's saying that we might get one day of rain. So these shoes are gonna be waterproof and easy to wipe off. So I'm gonna bring these. Here's the travel case. All right, so here's how it's looking in the case. Um, here's my irons. I have the club head covers on them, so I don't feel like I need to wrap them again. I think that's pretty good. This is empty. These are just the shafts for my woods, and this is my head cover that I just put on top. The woods heads are actually, two of them are in here, and two of them are in here, and then I have my golf shoes in here as well. Golf balls are in here, tees and other stuff and gloves are in here. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna put in here. It's just gonna be golf stuff. All right, next up we have the shipping labels. You can print them off from your shipping order or you can just go back into your ShipStix account and print them off. They do have very good instructional videos on their website, so that is definitely a plus. It's gonna be blurred out, but this is what it looks like. Ship it off to USA. Good morning from Kiowa Island, South Carolina. This place is beautiful. I, I have no words. I have my golf clubs here with me. A few things to note. My clubs were picked up on Monday end of day, as you guys know, at 6 p.m. And it arrived in South Carolina on Thursday end of day between 5 to 6 p.m. So I would say exactly three business days is how long it took for my clubs to get here. One more thing to say is 
I do have an air tag inside my clubs, so I knew where my clubs were that entire time. I knew when it was at the Atlanta airport, and I knew when it left the airport. Um, but I did get an email on Monday right as it was picked up, and then the next email I got was on Thursday when my clubs had left the airport out for delivery. So they do update you on the status, they don't update you every single day. You can track through the tracking number that's in your email. It's a clickable link and then when you open that web page, it does show you every time throughout its transit that it's been logged by someone handling it. So it is a good way to track but I would still recommend getting an air tag or some kind of tracking system so that you know on your own phone where it is the entire time. So let's open up my golf bag and see if everything's arrived. Also update on my dollar store plastic bag. It did work for delivery. <laughs> it's here. Safe and sound it seems. Let me take out all of my club heads and attach them back onto the shafts. <laughs> also I'm going to take off all the iron covers because I find it really annoying to take on and off on the golf course. There's one. There's two. There's the big boy. Four. That's all of my clubs. Make sure to bring this with you when you travel so you can reattach your club heads. Alright, we're all set for the golf course. In case anyone's wondering, I do have a the PXG Camel golf bag and it comes with five slots on the top and I put my driver and three wood and putter at the back. Move that back. During shipping, I reorganize them so they fit nicer, but in real life, all of my short irons are in the front. Five, six, seven is in the left slot. Um, hybrid and five wood are in the right and then driver three wood and putter in the back That's just how I organize it. Let me know how you guys do it. But yeah, my clubs have arrived safe and sound It is really Worry free. You don't have to do anything. You basically just get your package ready. They pick it up They deliver it and then you go onto the plane with no check luggage a plus you arrive and they're here ready to go experience wise you definitely pay for the convenience and i will say it is very convenient grab some tea hold it tight because i'm about to spill it here are my honest thoughts on ship sticks feeling a little bit crazy today we're gonna do pros and cons because that way it keeps it organized and easy to follow starting off with the pros the first one is definitely convenience Yes, you can put a price on convenience, and yes, a lot of the time it hurts a little bit. Convenience is the number one thing about ship sticks. It feels so good to not have to carry your golf bag to the airport, around the airport to the oversized check luggage, XYZ. I am a carry-on traveler. If I don't have my golf bags, I have a carry-on suitcase and my backpack. 100% convenience is what you're paying for here. Number two is going to be tracking. As with all online orders nowadays, you can track your golf clubs. So when your golf clubs get picked up, they send you an email saying your clubs have been picked up. And then along the way, you can follow your order tracking number to see where someone's logged your golf bag along the way. I will suggest to get a air tag, which I had, or some kind of tracking thing that you can put in your golf bag so that you know at all times where your golf bag is in transition. The third pro is reliability. Shipsticks is definitely a legitimate company. It's been reviewed by a lot of notable golf brands as well. So don't worry, you're not gonna get scammed. This is a legitimate business. They do actually ship your golf clubs safely from where you are to where you're going. It's very expensive, but don't worry, they are reliable. Many people have used them. I have used them and my clubs came safely. So that's all I can say about that. Let's get on to the cons because this is, some of these are not necessarily cons. They're just things that I think it's good for you to know before you place your order. And these are things that I wish I knew before I placed my order. First off is cost. As I said, all in, I paid over 500 Canadian dollars for that to ship my golf clubs. Cost is a very subjective thing. $500 to you may be pocket change. 
I don't know. It's really up to you. If I wasn't making this video, maybe I wouldn't have checked out on that price. <laughs> Cost is definitely something to prepare yourself for if you want to pay for this convenience. I will point out one other thing with cost. On their website, on the homepage, they say something about avoiding paying a fortune on airline costs. And if you've never traveled with your golf bags, let me tell you something. If you book an economy standard ticket, it's very, very likely, as in every time I've done this, you have a complimentary checked bag. And your golf bag is not an extra large bag, it's not an extra cost to you. You may have to drop your golf bags at the oversized area, but it counts as the same as any other complimentary checked luggage. So for me to bring my golf club on the airplane is actually no extra cost than the plane ticket I bought. If you pay a economy basic fare, so the cheapest flight you can get with Air Canada, an extra luggage fee is $75. Think if it's worth it for you. Now I did mention earlier, if you have a short layover or you're scared that your clubs may not make it to your final destination, then that's a good reason to check out ship sticks. If you are just direct flight going somewhere, I would say just bring it on the airplane. First one was cost. Second one is going to be the pickup time frame. This is just something for me that was a little bit frustrating. For me, they said my clubs would get picked up between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. That is the entire working day. They picked up my golf clubs at 5.59 p.m., one minute before 6 p.m. So I waited from 9 a.m. to 5.59 p.m. And then I called them and I was like, are you guys coming to pick up my golf clothes? Because it's almost six. And they told me that the drivers have no way of contacting us. You don't know when they're gonna pick you, pick up your clubs within that time frame. I mean, I can confirm they did pick it up in the time frame one minute before 6 p.m. The other thing is they want you to leave your clubs outside fully packaged, everything ready, just leave it by the door and the driver just comes, picks up and goes. They don't have any shipping label equipment for you, so you have to prepare everything yourself. That's the third thing is if you're taking your clubs to the airport, they print out the luggage tags and stuff. For this, you have to prepare your own shipping label, so make sure you have a printer or a printer accessible. Print out your shipping label, have it all packaged well. I would say add some extra padding inside, some bubble wrap maybe take off your club heads like I did. So all of that stuff, prepare yourself. The drivers just come pick up and go. I personally am not okay with leaving my clubs just outside, especially recently in the city. We can't even leave packages outside for that long, okay? So it's a little bit worrying that it's that whole time frame. For me, in both Canada and the US coming back, they picked up in the afternoon. I think if anyone from Shipsticks is watching this video, one thing that I would like is a tighter time frame, so maybe like a two hour, maybe even three hour time frame of like this is when we'll pick it up between 3 to 6 p.m. instead of like the entire day. So I'm sitting around like I don't want to go anywhere because that what if someone takes my clubs or whatever. I'm just waiting around not knowing when they're going to get picked up. There you have it. That's the pros and cons list. Personally, I say this is definitely a convenient and reliable resource to have. If Shipstick's goal was to compete with airlines, I would say they do have an advantage in terms of the reliability because we've had some issues recently with taking your clubs on the airplane. However, for reliable airlines or if you don't have a transfer, I would say 100% I would take my clubs on the airplane with me. Feel free to weigh the pros and cons. I'm really trying to give you a balanced review of ship sticks. Obviously for me, I don't think the price is worth it for most of my travel needs. I totally understand why they are pricing it that way because they are using carrier services like DHL. So they have to keep their prices competitive while still making money. It's a business. We all want to make money as a business. So I totally understand that because their competition is mail service and they have to pay for that as well. I just have to say if it is just for your vacation and you're using it as an alternative to bring it on the plane, really ask yourself if you need that convenience, if you're really scared of the airline and if you're willing to pay way more to not have your clubs go on the plane with you. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video gave you a good insight into ship sticks if you were ever curious about using them. If you are suggesting it to your friends, now you know a little bit more. Please don't let my experience deter you from using ship sticks if you are interested in it. You may have a totally different experience. If you are shipping it short distance from one state to another, 
it's probably going to cost you a lot less. So keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!